this passage of scripture is a little different. God is not interjecting God's self into history and changing a, 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 a person. What makes this uniquely different from the other passages, here we have God taking people through transformation and in the process their names are changed. Here we find Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego being given another name, but that name did not define them. What we see in this passage not necessarily the transforming power of God changing and transforming our names, but it is the staying power that we develop when we follow God and not those that are quote unquote over us. And so the battle is different. The battle is not this power for transformation, but the battle is that because they are transformed. How do you keep your name? How do you keep your mind? How do you keep your faith? How do you keep your trust in God? How do you believe in the future that God has for you? How do you continue to be who God has called you to be when everybody else is calling you to be something different? Daniel's name meant that God judged me. And because only God judged him, he didn't care what the king said. Because God judged him, it didn't matter what was said about him in the parlor square. Because, not only because God was his judge, did he not care what the king did? He didn't care what was on the menu uh, from the king. He didn't care about any of that. But because he knew that God was his judge, only person he wanted to live to please was God. How freeing. How liberating. There is something that happens when you know that God is your judge. You don't care what the king says. You don't, you don't, you don't care what anybody else says. You live for God, and when you live God's way, when you're living as a disciple and you stand firm in that, that's, that's what we've got to learn to do in the church. We have to learn how to stand firm in our discipleship. I'm so sick of people who are so quick to stand firm in their anger and hatred and what they don't like and people that they don't like. We need some people who are going to stand up and say, for God I live and for God I die. And because I'm going to live for God, I'm going to love everybody else. We need somebody who will be grounded in their discipleship. Just like Daniel was grounded in his faith and he changed his menu because he knew who he was and he knew who he was. And he reminds me that I am his and he is mine. Before you know it, we're then now, I'm now thinking and, 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 and focused on ministry. Like Daniel, when he knew that only God could judge him, he, he changed his menu and he was able to change his life. He prayed three times a day. He did those things in order to be closer to who he truly was, which was somebody who was only concerned, not by man's thought, but was only concerned about God. When you know who you are, God is able to birth a call into ministry out of you. What? is he calling you to do?